Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on a very simple form of spring latch that I'm going to be using on a cupboard door. The first step in forging the latch bar is to create an offset that's going to define the handle. This material is going to be forged into a long taper and then I'll be bending it into a simple scroll to form the handle. Next I'll be creating another offset that's about 3 eighths of an inch away from the first offset. The material left behind is going to be forged into the pivot point for the latch bar. This offset is forged on three sides of the bar and is going to define the dimension for that section of the latch. Now that both offsets have been forged, I can spread out the material for the pivot. The final shape of the piece is going to be cleaned up later at the bench. The only thing I'm trying to do here is create a forging that gives me enough material to work with, but that's still close enough to the final shape that I don't need to do a lot of filing to clean it up. The final offset defines the transition between the pivot area of the bar to the large flat end of the bar that actually hooks into the keeper. I usually forge this part a lot longer than I need to and then I cut it after the whole thing is assembled. To find the location for this offset, I just compare the forging to the pattern of the back plate that I'm working with. So here we have the rough forging ready to be cleaned up at the vise. The main area that I want to clean up is the pivot point and the section of the bar that's going to be pushing up against the spring. The rest of it is going to get pretty minimal cleanup. I'm just going to make sure that the back is very flat and that the handle doesn't have any rough edges. The back plate of the latch is made out of 16 gauge sheet metal. Here I've used spray adhesive to glue the pattern for the back plate onto the sheet metal. To transfer the pattern to the sheet metal, I use an engraving pencil and then just follow the outline of the pattern. To cut out this pattern, I'm going to be using a very heavy cold chisel with a narrow edge. This chisel gets driven straight into the pattern piece. To follow the line, I lock the far edge of the chisel into the cut and position the front edge of the chisel on the line. Once the pattern has been scored, it's just a matter of breaking away the pieces you don't want. You use the same process for curved lines, however, sometimes you need to make relief cuts with a hacksaw to be able to break away the scrap pieces. It might seem counterintuitive to use a narrow edge chisel to cut out this pattern piece. It's mostly straight lines, so you would think that a three quarter inch or a one inch wide cool chisel would go a lot faster, but it really doesn't. And the reason is that it takes a tremendous amount of pressure to drive a three quarter inch chisel down to the full depth of cut that you need to break away a piece of sheet metal. 
So you need to start using a heavier hammer to drive that chisel and once you start using a heavier hammer then it becomes a lot harder to control that chisel and follow the line. So I found over the years that I can get a lot more work done with a lot less effort using a narrow chisel. Now that the piece is cut out we just need to clean up all the rough edges with a file. The spring for this latch is also made out of the 16 gauge sheet metal that I used for the back plate. The first thing we need to do is file a very flat reference edge on the bottom edge of this spring blank. The reason we can get away with using mild steel for this spring is because the movement of the spring is really slight so it's well within the elastic limit for mild steel. We're ready to start laying out the parts and I usually put masking tape on all the pieces so that I could just use a pencil to do all the marking. The first thing we need to lay out on the back plate is the range of motion for the latch bar. To get the dimensions for the opening that I need I draw the bottom edge of the latch bar in the horizontal position and then the top edge of the latch bar when it's fully open. And then I transfer that measurement to the spring blank. To establish the height of the opening, I'm going to draw in the thickness of the latch bar and then I'm going to add to that the total height of the rivets that I'm going to be using. There isn't an exact formula for the rivet height, but I usually go a little long and then file off any excess. Here I'm using a hacksaw to make the relief cuts that I'm going to need to chisel out the rest of the material. I'm using the same cold chisel that I used for the rest of the pattern, only here I'm using the vice jaws as a straight edge to speed up the cutting process. Now I need to bend the spring into its final shape so I can figure out the rest of the dimensions for the spring. I'll position the spring roughly where it needs to be on the back plate and then measure the length to the pivot point. The bottom edge of the spring also needs to be cut away to reveal the rivet that anchors the spring to the back plate. The bottom edge of the spring and the top profile of the spring get cut away at the vise exactly the same way we did before. To finish the spring we need to clean up any rough edges and make sure that the spring has a nice even flex to it. We also need to file shoulders that are going to define the height of the rivets on both of the rivet tabs of the spring. These shoulders are going to lock the spring in position when we do the actual riveting of the spring to the back plate. Use a pencil to transfer the two rivet locations onto the back plate. And then drill out as much material as you can using a 1 16th inch drill. To clean out the drill holes you'll need a chisel that's exactly a 16th of an inch wide. You just drive the chisel into the back plate and shear out the waste material. The hole should be roughly the same as the thickness of the metal. If your chisel is the right size, you shouldn't need to do any filing to get your pieces to fit together. Here I'm working over the hardy hole in my anvil, but I normally cut these slots at the vise. The jaws are set just a little bit wider than the chisel. I usually pre-assemble everything to make sure that it's going to fit together properly. Once any final adjustments have been made, you're ready to start riveting. I use a small cross peen and a lot of light hammer blows. I'm 
hammering the length of the rivet, not across it. Once the spring is riveted, I file off any excess. I assemble just about everything with straight rivets. This rivet was just cut from a common nail. I'll start the rivet by holding the back plate about a quarter inch off the surface of the anvil. I'm going to use very light hammer blows to start setting the rivet. Once I feel that the rivet has expanded enough to start grabbing the sides of the pieces, I'll start working the rivet from both sides. I'll make sure there's enough material for the rivet head on the back side of the plate and then I'll drive the whole rivet head forward into the countersink that I have drilled into the back of the plate. And then I'll turn the latch over and finish forming the head on the front side. Now we're back in the fire with the completed latch. I need to put a layer of forging scale on everything to unify all the different textures in this latch. Also the heat from the fire is going to free up the rivet. So here we have the completed latch. The rivet is nice and loose but the spring has been pushed out of position. You adjust the spring by using a square face punch to apply pressure to the upper part of the spring and push it away from the latch bar. And then you use another punch to push the tip of the spring towards the latch bar. When you release the spring it will shift downwards and apply pressure to the latch bar. You may need to do this in a couple of different places to get the right amount of pressure. Now all you need to do is drill the mounting holes and design the catch plate to fit the cabinet that you're using. We'll see you next time.